Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at uh, Mac OS Server. And we're looking at the High Sierra version of Server. And we're going to take a look at our network configuration this week. So once we have the server components installed and we have everything uh, looking well on the screen, we've got it all set and ready to go, then what we need to do is make sure that our network configuration is set up appropriately. Now, what, why that's important is because we want to make sure that the server gets the same IP address every time it boots so that when we look down here, we have our connections that we're getting the same number every time because this is going to come in handy when we need to connect to our server later remotely or through VPN. Now, one of the things I highly recommend is that you do connect to your server by Ethernet uh, because you can do it by Wi-Fi, but with all of the dropouts of Wi-Fi, uh, it's just not quite as consistent. And so if you really need to get to your server, you may have a problem if your Wi-Fi goes down or you have a problem with it. So I would highly recommend connecting by Ethernet. Now, what I'm going to do to demonstrate this is I'm going to show you two different ways to do the network configuration. So what I'm going to do is in this screencast, I'm going to show you how to do it with an Apple router so that those of you that have an Apple router can uh, look and see how you're able to set that up so that you can have uh, that router connected. Now, one of the advantages of having an Apple router is that it will show up here in the sidebar and server itself will manage the port forwarding for you. So that what will happen is if you wanted to open ports on the router, as soon as you uh, make one of these services live, then server will automatically open those ports on the Apple router for you without having to reboot the router or you having to know what the numbers are or anything like that. And so it really is a, a convenient way to manage a server. I'm also going to show you, though, how to do it on uh, another type of router uh, so that you get an idea of how to set up those uh, reservations for this particular IP address for your server. And then we'll also talk later about how to open the ports for that and get everything configured the way you want it. So I uh, just wanted to be able to do it two ways because I know not everybody has the same setup. So what I'm going to do is go to the uh, setup of the Apple router. And so you'll go ahead and take a look at that and then we'll go from there. So what I'm going to do is pull up the airport utility here. And what I get is I get a diagram of my network and how everything is set up. So let me just cover this real quick. So this internet area here, represented by the globe, you can see it's green. And so I've got that set up, uh, is connected to my modem. So this kind of represents my modem here. It's got a hard line uh, connected to the actual router itself. Uh, and that's what that single line is, is that's an Ethernet connection. And then I've got another base station out there uh, to extend my network, and it's doing it wirelessly, and that's why I've got the dotted line there. And so it's just a diagram of how my network is actually set up. So let's go ahead and uh, go into the router itself. So if I just click on the router, I get this, and I just click on Edit. And it brings down this drop down for me to be able to edit my settings in my airport. So if I come over to network here, uh, this is where all of these things take place. And so let me just explain a little bit of what this window is telling us. Uh, the first thing you'll see here is you'll see my router mode, and this is really important. I'm just going to click on this to show you the different modes. Uh, I can set my router in off or bridge mode, which means basically that my router uh, is not doing any routing itself. It's just bridging to another router uh, to extend my network. And so that's like my, what my second base station is doing is, is, it, is it's in bridge mode extending my network. Then I've got DHCP only, uh, and DHCP stands for Dynamic Host uh, Configuration Protocol, and that's what does all of the assigning of addresses on your network. So every time your device hits the network, uh, it needs an IP address, uh, a local one, so that it can access all of the servers, on, uh, all of the services on that network. And so that's where you can see below we've got IP addresses of 10.0.1.3 and that sort of thing. Now DHCP and NAT is the same DHCP service, but it adds uh, NAT, which is Network Address Translation or Port Forwarding. And so that's the mode that you want to have your airport, you, uh, airport in. Uh, depending on your different routers, you'll have a different setup. Now you'll notice DHCP reservations go here, and you can see the NAT part or the port settings go down here. And I'm going to cover those in more uh, detail when we get to the place where we're talking about port forwarding. So you'll notice I've got a DHCP range. So I've got a range from uh, you know, uh, 0.2 to 0.200. Those are all the addresses that the router will assign. Uh, 0.1 is just reserved for the router itself. That's why that doesn't show up there. Uh, 
And down here is where I have the reservations. And you can see I've got different things already set up with reservations already. Now, one of the things I want to do is show you how to set up a reservation for your server, because this is going to be very important for you to do. Uh, to do that, I just hit a plus, click the plus right here, and you notice I can put in a description. So, for instance, if I just put in server right here, and I can choose to reserve the address by MAC address or by DHCP uh, and the client's ID. So what I'm going to do is use MAC address, because uh, that's the easiest here sitting in front of my server. And then I can set up whatever address I want here. You can see when I click on that, it allows me to delete it and put whatever I want in there. So I could put in, let's say, 200 or whatever number I want. And then all I've got to do is put in a MAC address here. So let me show you how to find that. Uh, to find the MAC address, you want to go into uh, System Preferences. And you go to the Network tab. And inside this Network tab, what we're going to do is go to the Advanced uh, area here. And all the way over to where it says Hardware. And in this hardware area, this is your MAC address. And so what you want to do is copy this address right here. And when we're done, let me just say cancel here, and we're just going to put that down. You paste that MAC address right in here. And when you're done, you save it. And then what will happen is, is once you've done that, then you will have a DHCP reservation show up here. Now what this means is that every time I restart my router or restart my server or anything like that, my server will always get the same local IP address. That's very important because all of your other devices will be set to using that local IP address for their own DNS on the network. And if that number were to change because you didn't set up a reservation, then all of their DNS queries would get messed up. And so this is the way to make sure that everything's set the same in the way that you want it. Once you do that, then you just click on the Update button, and it will reset your uh, router and make that reservation happen. And then your server will get that same address every single time it starts up. Now, once we've done that, uh, the other thing we want to do is make sure we've got our router set up properly. So we're going to go back out to our airport utility again. And we're going to want to make sure that we've got our uh, IP address set up the way we want it on here as well. So we're going to go into Internet here. And on the Internet tab, what we've got is you can see we've got DNS servers here that are already pre-set up. And so what I want to do is go in and put our server's IP address in there. So let me go ahead and set that up. Okay, so in here I'm going to put in my local IP address. just like that. And then I need to put an external uh, DNS server as well, because remember, this, uh, this is a local number, so it's only going to do translation on my local network. But I need something to do an external translation. So let me put in, I'm going to put in an open DNS number, just like that. And uh, open DNS is a great service if you haven't checked it out. It allows you to filter uh, your web content coming in and out, and it does it at the, uh, at the router level so that uh, that way you don't have to do it per machine. So it's just something that I use um, to really make the, make the setup work. So I'd want to put all of that information in there. And once I'm done, right, and I've got it the way I want it, then I would hit update and the router will update itself. Uh, I'm not going to hit that yet because it's going to shut everything down, but I just wanted to show that to you. And I wouldn't worry right now about your IP6 uh, uh, DNS uh, servers. Um, though uh, I'm sure we could do a reservation for that as well, and I'll probably look at doing something like that in the future. Okay, so that shows you how to configure the Apple Airport to work with your server. Like I said, we're going to take a look at some other third-party options as well, just in case you don't have an Apple router that you want to use. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.